Hey y'all, today is new pen day. I got my first ever Kaweco Sport in the mail. It's been a long time that I've been looking at this pen and thinking about getting one, and I just haven't done it because I've heard mixed reviews on quality control and different things, but they've really piqued my interest lately and I've been looking at more stuff. And from what I can tell, most people seem to really like them and have good luck with them. So I figured I would go ahead and try one. So yeah, I'm gonna pull it out of here and we'll take a look. All right, here we go. Uh, Goldspot gives Goulet pens a run for their money with uh, packaging. That was really nice. Very secure, which means it's very difficult to take out, but I don't mind. So I also got a pad of Rhodia paper so that I have something other than my writing notebooks to do writing samples in. So I don't have to clutter up my writing notebooks um, with that. So I have some, some nice scratch paper. It's also fountain pen friendly. Okay, well, here we go. Here is our little tiny Kaveco box. It's so small. It's so light too. Wow, is there even a pen in there? It feels almost empty. Okay, so let's take a look at this really quick. So we've got some history stuff. Um, I'm somewhat familiar with Kaveco history and it is interesting to read about um, or to listen to somebody on YouTube talk about. Um, they've had a long and fraught history with a lot of ups and downs, but sounds like they're going strong right now. So, um, anyway, and then we've got some filling instructions here and we don't need those. So let's just open this up here. All right. So. What we have here is one of Goldspot's special edition, like exclusive edition models of the sport. So this is the ultimate gray. I think it's the, their kind of limited edition for 2021. So you can only get this at Goldspot as far as I know. And it actually has Goldspot on the other side here. Um, and the reason I, I went with Goldspot this time is because I couldn't really find a demonstrator version of the pen currently available that I liked. Um, the frosted sports looked interesting, but they just weren't really calling to me. So I decided to try looking elsewhere, see if I could find a store that had something a little different. And I found this guy. So it's a demonstrator. So let's take a look here. It looks nice. Um, got your little Kaveco medallion finial there on top. Um, you can get this same colored body in silver and gold trim. I decided to go with gold. Um, actually, for a long time, I kind of hated gold on fountain pens. I This is actually my first pen with a gold colored nib. I've shied away from those, but... Um, decided to go with one this time. They've been growing on me. So have Kaveco pens. I haven't really been a fan for a while um, of the way they look, but I just decided to give it a shot. Um, I, I don't know, it's growing on me. So, but boy, that is small. Um, that's the first thing that jumps out at me. It's just so small. And of course that's the point, right? It's a, it's a pocket pen. So um, not a bad thing. So just for a quick sake of comparison, got a Twisby Eco right here and a Lamy Vista right here. So quite a bit smaller when it's closed, but of course the whole point of this pen is that you can post it this way and it becomes full sized so let's do a quick comparison here. I'm not going to cap these pens because I feel like that's not really a fair comparison. <laughs> they get pretty long sometimes if you cap 
or post. Yeah, if you post these pens. Um, yeah, so they they become fairly similar. I think the Kaveco Sport is still the shortest, but not by a whole lot. By the way, I know that there's maybe a little bit of a debate about how to pronounce Kaveco. I say Kaveco because most people say Kaveco, um, but if you watch videos by Goldspot, they actually say Kaweco, I think. And in some of their interviews with the CEO of Kaweco, he actually, I think, said Kaweco once. And I don't know if he was just trying to Americanize it because that's how some Americans say it. Um, I don't know. I think either way is probably appropriate. Kaweco, Kaweco, whatever. But I'm going to say Kaweco because that seems to be the most generally used and accepted um, way of saying it. So we've got this slightly tapered in grip section. It's very small, but the threading is not, um, it's not intrusive. It feels, feels pretty decent in the hand. Um, that actually feels really comfortable. I like that a lot. So that's fun. Um, it's such a small pen though. I might hold it. I might hold it more up on the barrel. We'll see. Sometimes it's hard for me to get the nib all the way down to the paper. If I hold the, the pen too close to the nib. So I might, I might go up like this and there's still plenty of room up here with the cap to do that. So yeah, I'm going to take this, uh, uh, cartridge out. It's rattling around in there. Okay. So it feels really sturdy. Um, it's got kind of a sharp lip there that feels slightly cheap to me. Yeah, overall, it's a nice pen. I'm just trying to decide if it's worth the, you know, the money that that you pay for it. But I guess we really need to do a writing sample to decide that. It does feel a little bit cheap when I'm screwing it. Well, actually, it was squeaking at first. I don't know if you heard that, but oh, well, there it goes. Really bugs me when pens do that. But I think that's one of those things that's just going to break in. Um, the threading is probably just a little bit rough around the edges from the manufacturing process or whatever. And I found that usually threading on pens breaks in and it stops feeling rough. It stops squeaking, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hopefully that goes away because that's, uh, if it doesn't, that's, that's kind of not cool for me. Um, my hand's almost small enough that I can use it unposted. I definitely prefer posted, but yeah. Anyway, for now, I'm just going to use this. I decided it wasn't really worth it for me to get a converter because I've just heard mixed reviews and some people prefer just refilling the cartridges. So I'm just going to pop this cartridge in really quick and we'll do a writing sample here in a second. Some people say, you know, after you pop this in, you just have to like leave your pen upside down for a while or whatever. But, um, I think that's kind of hilarious. Actually, you don't have to do that. You don't have to wait. You can just give your cartridge just a gentle squeeze a few times and that should get the ink moving enough so that it actually gets writing pretty quickly. Um, we'll see if I did it enough there. Okay, so we got our pen. Let's get our fancy new notepad out and we'll do a writing sample. Okay, so like last time, I'm gonna write a quote that means something to me, but I just realized I came into this unboxing video unprepared. So I'm gonna go find a quote really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go.
so I'll stop there. Um, so let's talk about this quote really quick, and then we uh, then we'll talk more about the pen. Um, really quick, this is Mary Mary Oliver. She's an amazing poet. If you haven't read any of her stuff before, I highly recommend it. I've read a lot of poetry, and hers is. She's one of the few poets where I feel like I could just pick up any book she wrote and I would just love it. So, um, yeah, great stuff. I just lost my sunlight, so I'm going to turn the lamp on. So, yeah, this is just the first part of her poem. And I will read it to you really quick in case you can't read my very uneven handwriting. Every day I see or I hear something that more or less kills me with delight, that leaves me like a needle in the haystack of light. It is what I was born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world. The poem goes on, but I think this captures the essence of it. Every day we're confronted with things that are amazing, and we might not really realize how amazing they are unless we really stop and pause to look and listen. And as a poet myself, I try to do that. I'm not always great at it, but I try to do it. And it's been amazing. As I write poetry, I learn a lot about the world around me and I gain a really profound appreciation for sometimes the most simple things. That's something that's cool about poetry. It kind of encourages you to do that. But whether you like poetry or write poetry or not, there are many ways to engage with the world in the way that Mary Oliver is talking about. Creativity of all forms, I think, helps you to do that. But even just taking a walk or a jog, just being outside, looking around you, just kind of taking it in, all that kind of stuff can be really helpful. So enough about that. Let's talk a little bit more about this pen and how it wrote. Wow. I, yeah, um, I really like how it writes a lot. It's so smooth. It actually kind of got away from me a little bit. I think I'm used to a little bit of feedback in my pens. So, and that kind of helps me to put the brakes on a little bit, but this thing's really smooth and it just kind of glides across the page in a way that I wasn't really ready for. And I was like, Hey, wait up a second. So it might be a little bit of an adjustment, but it's a very pleasant pen. It's not free of feedback. Um, let's do, oops, there, whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> promise it wasn't doing that at all a minute ago. That's so weird. Okay. It writes fine. I don't know why I'm getting these skips on these lines. Yeah, it's writing fine for me. So there is a little bit of feedback, like I said, but it's pleasant. I find this pen very pleasant, actually. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about this. Hopefully that skipping doesn't become a thing that persists. Hey y'all, it's me from the future. Well, a more recent past, I guess. Um, but we gotta talk about this pen uh, and where it ended up going. Um, that skipping issue I mentioned, it was bad. It turned out to be really bad. So um, it was being just a little bit finicky, but mostly great. But what I noticed as I kept using this pen is that it would write pretty much flawlessly and be just an, an amazing experience for the first paragraph or maybe the first half page of a writing session. And then it would just completely crap out on me. Just not even usable after a certain point. So it's like something in the feed or something can't keep up with the flow, which is weird because it's it was a fine nib that I had on it. So it's not like it's some gushy italic or bold or broad or whatever um it was just a fine so it should have been fine but it wasn't so and it was skipping so bad that whole letters or whole words would not show up like if i just wrote a straight line through like words would be missing and yeah basically it rendered my writing illegible and i just i couldn't use it so i sent it back to gold spot um they were nice about it and they had the return process was pretty smooth. The only thing that surprised me was that their return window is 15 days, I think. 
don't quote me on that, but I, it's shorter than I'm used to like the I'm used to, I, I, I guess I don't know what standard in the pen world, but I'm used to just kind of the general standard of like 30 days or whatever. But luckily my philosophy with a new pen is that you should use it as much as possible in the first couple of weeks so that you know for sure um, that you're not going to have problems with it further down the road. So I use this pen a lot, started having those issues and I contacted them and got it taken care of. I should also say I checked the nib, I flushed out the feed, I did everything you're supposed to do and I still had those problems. So I don't know what was going on there, but it was pretty disappointing because I did like that pen. I did like how it worked. Although I did notice in addition to the nib stuff, the plastic, I've heard people complain about the plastic being really soft and it is, it's very uh, scratch prone. I think it had scratches on it when I pulled it out of the box for the first time. Um, and those started to develop. And especially as you're, you know, unscrewing and posting this really long, clear um, cap, I just started to notice a lot of scratching. So that's not why I returned the pen. I would have kept the pen if the nib had not failed me, but with the writing issues that I had, I started to kind of reconsider. And, and I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I, I love this pen enough to exchange it for a new one. So I just sent it back and decided, you know what? I've heard about these quality control issues. That's why I refrained from getting a Kaveco for so long. And I think I just need to reconsider this for a while. I do think I'll try Kaveco again. And I would love for you, if you have these pens and use them, let me know what your experience has been because I would love to know that my experience is an outlier. I hope it's an outlier. Um, I hope this isn't the norm with Kaveco. So if you like Kaveco, Comment. If you don't like Kaveco, also comment. I, 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 I want to know because I would like to get another one of these pens in the future, but I think I'm going to wait until they come out with some new additions that call to me a little bit more. I think I decided that I'm not really much of a, a gray pen person. <laughs> um, but again, if the pen had continued to write as well as it did when I first took it out of the box, I would have kept it and I would have loved it. But it turned out to be like the worst skipping pen I've ever used. So yeah, that's it. I just, yeah, I had to give you that update instead of just finishing the unboxing video because it just, yeah, I want to make sure that I gave you accurate information here according to my experience. Yeah. Let me know what you think of this pen because I, again, I would really like to like this pen. So yeah. Talk to you later. Bye.